Mount Owen Moa. In 1987, an expedition entering a newly discovered network of caves deep beneath New Zealand's Mount Owen made a startling discovery. Scattered through an area of rockfall debris were the dinosaur-like remains of a claw with flesh and scaly skin. After thorough analysis, the claw was identified as belonging to the giant wingless bird, the upland moa. According to a DNA analysis published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the moa bird first appeared on the planet up to 8.5 million years ago. At the time, there was an estimate of at least 10 species of moa. The two largest species reached up to 12 feet and weighed about 510 pounds, while the smallest moa was around the size and weight of a turkey. Sadly, the moa went entirely extinct by the year 1400 in, quote, the most rapid human-facilitated megafauna extinction documented to date. In short terms, they were hunted to extinction by Maori hunters. The claw appeared fresh, as if it still had its fierce talons, preserved intact along with muscles, skin, and connective tissues. Despite its enticing and eerie appearance, lab analysis and carbon dating revealed the specimen was nearly 3,300 years old. This mummified claw brought no further clarity to rumored sightings of the moa that had been reported at the time. In 1993, Hotel owner and known mountaineer Mr. Paddy Freeney claimed that he and two friends spotted a six-foot moa in the Craigieburn Range in Arthur's Pass, Canterbury. Mr. Freeney even tried to support his sighting with a blurry photograph. Freeney was a member of the British elite SAS squad and an avid mountaineer and outdoorsman. Therefore, his claim was taken seriously and reached the highest levels of government. However, the authorities couldn't find a moa anywhere in the area. Paddy spent the subsequent years of his life launching and funding expeditions to find proof of a live moa to no avail. This obsession eventually ruined his reputation. In 2008, a married couple of cryptozoologists claimed to have taken casts of moa footprints from a remote northern island in New Zealand. Some believe that the moa from the 2008 sighting is the same as the one from 1987, still roaming around New Zealand by itself. As of 2020, the claw resides at the Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tangarewa, most recent rumors say that British scientists are trying to find a way to clone the animal. Catskill's Devil In January of 2016, a Reddit user with the throwaway account Wigged Hiker Throwaway posted pictures of this unusual statue to the thread r slash paranormal. In the post, the user claimed that he and a friend were hiking in the Catskills when they stumbled upon a creepy statue in a cave. The old woodcarved statue looks like a human wearing some sort of long garb outfit. It had nails stuck in its eyes and a noose around its neck. The user further claimed that when he and the friend removed the statue from its location, both of them, especially the friend, experienced unexplainable haunting events. Both men started perceiving foul smells, objects changing locations, strange knockings in the middle of the night, and muddy footprints left around the house. The user, who was later identified with the name of Danny, said, quote, a couple days later, my friend calls me and tells me that he thinks the statue is haunted because it keeps moving from its spot and he keeps smelling weird stuff. Now last night, someone knocked on his door, but no one was there when he opened it, and he's super weirded out. He thinks he has a ghost because of the statue. Many fellow Redditors in the comments offered their advice. Some suggested the area and caves were popular sites for devil worshippers and immature occultists. They also warned the friends against burning or damaging the statue, as this could only anger the spirit further. Other people believe the figure could belong to a benevolent force who only wished to play with the couple. The object, nicknamed the Crone of the Catskills, has never been definitively identified or linked to a specific kind of ritual. The story didn't end there, though. That same year, the two friends contacted the owners of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult and sent in the object. The museum's owners claim that the figure moves around during the night and that it's even gone as far as breaking a crucifix apart. Several psychics and subject matter experts have traveled across the country to visit the figure. Some believe it was carved and created as a vessel for non-human spirits. Others think it was a curse intended to blind and kill an unknowing victim. Another psychic wanted to exercise the figure with holy water. Today, the Crone of the Catskills still resides with the museum's owners and has appeared on several YouTube videos and podcasts. Royston Cave
Beneath the town center streets of Royston, England, lies an ancient, man-made cave. In August 1742, handy workers in Royston tried to dig a hole for a bench, but stumbled upon a millstone. When the men dug around it and pulled it upwards, they found that it was a door, hiding a shaft that led to an enormous, artificial cave beneath the town. Even back in 1742, the cave was a mystery from the past. The man-made, bell-shaped cave measures 26 feet high and 17 feet across. Some believe that whoever built the cavern was inspired by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. The cave is covered in medieval-era religious carvings, with nooks in the wall. It was most likely created sometime between the 1300s and the 1600s. There is also some evidence that the cave may have once had a wooden floor as well. The carvings are steeped in Catholic imagery and depict scenes from the Bible and popular saints of the time, such as St. Catherine of Alexandria, St. Lawrence, and St. Christopher. Mystery has plagued the cave since its discovery, and plenty of theories surround it. One popular theory among historians is that the cave was used as a headquarters by the Knights Templar in the early 13th century, supporting their efforts to organize the Crusades and possibly holding secrets to the mythical Holy Grail. Believers of this theory point to the carvings that resemble the coded symbols of the Knights Templar as proof. Augustinian monks claim that the cave was simply a sort of storehouse used by the local monks to keep their produce cool and double at times as a chapel for their prayers. Another theory is that the cave was used by King James I, who had a palace in the area. Since 1790, the cave has been open to the public, and thousands of people from around the world have traveled to see it. Almost 280 years later, the cave's origins and purpose remain unknown. Hybrid Animal Several millennia-old cave paintings helped discover a baffling mystery. In 2016, an interdisciplinary team of archaeologists, paleontologists, and geneticists published a study in Nature Communications claiming to have identified a previously unknown hybrid animal depicted in several cave art paintings. The finding helped solve the mystery of the origin of Europe's largest land mammal, the European bison. This animal appeared suddenly in the fossil record a mere 11,700 years ago, around the end of the last ice age. Researchers analyzed the genomes of 64 bison and cross-referenced these findings with the ancient European cave art. Using radiocarbon-dated bones, they determined that the emergence of the new hybrid bison synced with the old drawings. Until this discovery, the animal's depictions and the paintings were thought to only reflect a change in art style. The 2016 finding explained why the two bison forms appear in the art, and why some bison remains uncovered from the Ice Age era were not uniform in size and morphology. However, since the researchers have not been able to find a skull from the hybrid, they have been unable to precisely assess what the animal looked like, what it ate, and other kinds of behavior. The results have left archaeologists intrigued over other unidentified creatures depicted in cave drawings and with the possibility that ancient humans coexisted with them. Exactly how many of these thought to be imaginary animals are just yet to be discovered? Crystal Maiden In the remote jungle of Belize's Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve lies the Aktun Tunichel Moknal, also referred to as ATM, a cave rediscovered in 1989. Known in English as the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre, it consists of a complex system of tunnels and cavernous rooms roughly three miles long. Belizean archaeologist Dr. Jamie Awe was the first person to explore it. From 1993 through 2000, he and his team conducted thorough archaeological research in the cave. Some of the almost 1,400 items found in this place include ceramics and cave formations carved by Mayans, with figures like silhouettes of faces and animals from the area. Due to the remoteness and the cave's calcification process, most of the relics and items have been preserved just as they were left by its creators. Found in another chamber were dozens of Maya skeletons ranging in age from infant to adult, dated between 700 and 900 AD. Nearly all the skulls had markings indicating blunt trauma to the head. Many of the younger skeletons have cranial deformation signs, giving their heads a slightly elongated alien look. However, its most popular and studied corpse is the skeleton of an 18-year-old teenage girl, most likely a sacrifice victim, found at the innermost chamber of the ATM. The girl, whose legs and vertebrae appear to have been crushed, became the subject of intense curiosity. Her sparkling, calcified bones earned her the nickname the Crystal Maiden. According to the Mayan tradition, the cave was an entrance to hell, and home of demons responsible for illness, pain, and tragedy. The reasons for the sacrifices are unknown, but it is believed they were made to satisfy the rain god Chuck or the gods of the underworld. Locals believe the cave is cursed and haunted. Today, the ATM is visited by a select amount of tourists. 
However, cameras were forbidden after a tourist dropped one over a skull, smashing it. Watch Dark Space, our newest channel that features the most mysterious and little-known stories of U.S., Soviet, and global space exploration from the dawn of the space race to today. Click now for our latest episode, The Cosmonaut Space Gun. Click now to subscribe.